Okay. Um, so hi everybody. Uh, I'm Thomas Greco. Um, so I'm currently, uh, my latest endeavor is, uh, I'm a co-founder of the company AWOL, which is short for, uh, Accelerate Web3, uh, Laboratories. And, uh, so we're just a small firm and we do some consulting, like market research for, uh, different tech companies. And I uh, joined in to lead the engineering uh, aspect of that. So internally, we're uh, doing some, uh, we're building some cool software, um, specifically uh, on top of the Agoric uh, blockchain. So uh, I guess stay tuned for the coming months because there's going to be a lot of uh, things uh, just being released, uh, especially as Agorch mainnet uh, continues. Um, and so before, uh, so I, I spent the last about five years working uh, in as a fintech, like a software engineer for different banking institutions. Uh, most recently, I was at Bank of America where i was building out their derivatives trading platforms uh but i left there in the end of june to focus on the decentralized finance blockchain web3 space full time and yeah um i should also know uh, add that i'm very passionate about just a function of programming, uh, like applying uh, function of programming concepts uh, when building out uh, like web applications. Uh, I think that especially as like you know Web three grows and we're we're going to see all these new financial uh, applications being used. I think it's more important than ever that uh, people who are building like client facing applications are uh, doing so in a way that they're just minimizing uh, any chances of side effects occurring within the application and just get like providing users with the best uh, user experience uh, possible. Tom, can, can I ask a question, Thomas, quickly? Because I, I think uh, yeah. I, I'd love to know why, you know, why you made the decision to transition into Web3. Um, you know, what was it about the the infrastructure specifically and the technology that, that brought you over? Uh, uh, so it was actually IPFS uh, in, in what, September of 2019. Uh, I stumbled upon IPFS and it really blew my mind. Uh, and it just kind of made total sense to me as the, you know, really like, like this is, uh, this decentralized manner, uh, of kind of things working and like would put us, I think, as people in a better situation than uh some of the current like tech giant uh models that we have in place today uh so yeah it was ipfs open the floodgates and then it was pretty much game over from there we just stayed on nice and w where did you um you know ipfs was your initial entryway i'm curious where you know where did you where did you kind of go from there? Were you working on IPFS? Were you using their technologies? Uh, um, no. So uh, I'm not exactly sure how I stumbled upon it, but where I went from there was um, so that resulted in a deep dive of just how IPFS worked, uh, like in my basically learning things like uh merkle uh merkle hash trees uh and then so 
it was like a pretty intense deep dive that I took into the technology. Uh, I guess maybe it was majority of it uh, was because of how innovative I thought the, like the, the project was, but I also was aware of how powerful just blockchain tech in general uh, is and uh, like the role that it was going to play in the future. So yeah, that, uh, that kind of allowed me to bite the bullet a little bit and then just dive into, like I said, like learning uh, how they use Merkle like trees and IPFS. And then just that, that kind of like I segued into learning more about like consensus uh, mechanisms specifically avalanche uh that was like pretty much the first one that i dove into big time uh and yeah i was i was captivated from the very start i'm not sure if that answers your question it, it does i'm just you know at, at a higher level though um you know imagine other people following your footsteps uh today rather than when you started um you know, how, how, are you seeing, you know, how, how is, how, how would you, would you approach anything differently now or would you follow the same path you've been on to, to get to where you're at? Um, so I think the community is uh, just a lot larger now, present day. So my advice would be is to definitely reach out. Uh, like if there's any projects or technologies that you think are interesting, uh, there's likely a Discord or some some sort of Telegram channel, um, and people are just really willing to help. So I guess that would be my advice to anybody trying to get started uh, within the space. And, and I mean, how much time in your day do you spend on uh, you know on this on these channels uh, looking for questions or answering questions? Uh, are you I mean, what, what, how how has your work um, your work day changed in the advent of Web three uh, tools being available? Um, so it's, I guess it's a little bit hard to quanti really quantify. Um, like I can't say that I dedicate a specific amount of time each day towards answering questions, but well, if somebody does reach out, they get no, I. I, I guess the, the other side is, I mean, Discord's become very popular. I appreciate that, but it's also very noisy. Yes. And I was just wondering if you have your own preferred ways of communicating rather than keeping ears to multiple channels. Like, you know, if, if there's, you know, because everyone certainly who's entering the space will, the first thing they want to do is go to the Discord for the project. Uh, maybe they used to go to the Telegram, maybe they still do, but it's, you know, it's sometimes if, if there's so many places to go, it's very hard to find the right person at the right place. And so, uh, um, I'm just curious, are, are you active, you know, so if, you, if someone wanted to have a meaningful conversation with you, is it best to email you, to tweet at you, or how would they find you? Uh, so tweeting at me uh, is probably the best way to get in touch with me. Um, on Discord, yeah, there's a lot of spam. Uh, so it's kind of hard to sift through all of that. Same with Telegram. Um, my advice for people though who uh like you know they they found a technology that they like and they found a community on discord uh i mean i think if you just you know, as long as you don't try to keep up with 30 different communities i think that's when it kind of gets like difficult um but if there's like you know one piece of technology that you're really interested in learning more about uh, and they have a fairly active uh, community, um, then, I mean, at least in my experience, like, uh, I've, uh, I've had success with just talking to different team members. Um, are, are there any um, new, new programming tools becoming available soon in, in 2022 that, are, that you've been waiting on? to help, you know, enhance the way you do your work day to day? Or is there any like projects that you're looking forward to seeing come to fruition? Uh, um, probably uh, Agoric, Agoric's uh, smart contracting 
uh, system uh, like is is the most anticipated in my for me. Um, uh, Akash is another one, uh, like uh, the Akash network. Um, but that's not really like a, a tooling that I use in my day to day. Uh, but and then I well one more I do want to mention is Cold Stack. Uh, are you from? I'm not sure if anyone is familiar. Uh, but I recently was made aware of it, and it's a decentralized cloud uh, like provider. So. Uh, I believe that it just it aggregates um, instances from different cloud providers uh, and just removes like a single point of failure. Interesting. Um, yeah. So um, I, did you have, I actually I don't know if we did this. Could, could you define what functional, um, you know, um, you know, I, I guess the question this this session was why Web three needs functional programming. Uh, could you did you address that directly yet? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, but I will right now. Please. Uh, okay. Um, so uh, obviously the web is has been getting more and more complex uh, over the last decade, and you know, with each year that passes, it's it's going to continue. Uh, like the complexity of programs and the features that users are, are gonna like request, uh, are just gonna keep you know getting more like larger, larger, and managing that complexity is just such an impossible task. Um, I mean, it seems like as uh, from the very beginning of software. Uh, one of the things that's remained the same is that, uh, like complexity really is the, like the, the main root of, of like so many issues with software. Um, and so now, uh, like with the web three space, um, uh, I think it's more important than ever, uh, to begin educating people on not only how to build like a, a user, like a UI or uh, using like a framework like React or Vue, but rather uh, really like hammering the importance of uh, building out user interfaces um, using functional programming fundamentals, specifically like pure functions and uh, higher order functions. Um, and so, yeah, the uh, basically the goal of functional programming is to uh, uh, like eliminate side effects, or I guess the goal for when, especially when building out a UI, it's just making sure that you are putting the checks in place uh, to where there's no there's no unexpected behavior that occurs within uh, you know your web application. Um, I'm sure some people here on the call have tried to use different um, like DeFi or Web three applications on mobile. And it really seems as though three, like seventy-five percent of them or more, uh, just really can't even function. Uh, and more and more, I find myself even on the the desktop browser, you know, connecting my, to a wallet, and then some non-deterministic. Uh, behavior occurs to where like, maybe MetaMask says that my wallet is connected, but the UI isn't registering it, so it's still showing me like, a connect wallet button. 
uh, it's a trivial example, but I think that uh, these things are really, really, like, really important uh, to uh, kind of combat in order for just like in order for the, the Web three to to really progress uh, on on the traject on the trajectory that I, I I hope it will. Are you? I have a quick question about functional programming. Is it is it something that you see um, you see as? Let me rephrase this. Is is it something you you think is not being taken into consideration enough, or is it something that you know? Is it a framework that developers should use when building in Web three? I'm kind of just more curious about how you know what your experience is with it in regards to the projects you've been involved with. Um, yes, so uh, like really the inspiration for the talk uh, come came from uh, a blog post from Douglas Crockford in 2019, uh, and I think he kind of touched. He like answered that question well, uh, where he said that um, basically uh, like there needs to be a, a shift in and there needs to be a shift in the paradigm that people are using to program, uh, and so um, but could you just uh, repeat that question uh, one more time? So, yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, it's essentially. I, I guess my question is, you know, how how do developers really use functional programming in in Web three? Um, and have they not been? And you know, with the projects you've been involved with, is this something you've you've had to apply in cases where others were not? Uh, yes. So. Um, they can apply uh so yeah functional programming i mean it can be applied to any language that has the ability to uh have functions be passed in as uh, arguments to other functions um now in my experience uh i've worked on like a, a handful of you know, like a various different code bases, some extremely large scale code bases. And I've definitely experienced uh, the issues that come from uh, not, not just uh, not approaching development from the start, uh, from a, uh, like a, a so, like taking a stance that's in uh, that you're gonna, that's not declarative. So just imperative code, uh, it just tends to it just let it it leads uh, it leaves a code more vulnerable to bugs for a handful of reasons. Uh, like one, so there's more surface area if you think of things like a loop. A for loop, just to loop over uh, uh, any sort of like a ride. Um, so basically, every time that you're like looping over something or creating any sort of intermediary intermediary variable to store a value, uh, that is just opening up your code base. Uh, to, to, it's making it more susceptible to bugs. And whereas when you follow just the, the, like the core concepts of functional programming, it uh, like the result is like the code is just far more readable. And um, so instead of having, you know, just a function like a huge function bodies you're able to just you know, compose you're able to just uh create behavior by composing whatever sort of uh like whatever you're trying to achieve whether it's 
you know, or doing some sort of uh, calculation on a number or uh, just like, yeah, get, you know, iterating through an array and transforming some of those items or properties from those items or filtering them out. Yeah. Uh, it, like doing that from a declarative standpoint sure. versus an imperative standpoint, it's just kind of night and day. Thank you. Um, I, I, pre I appreciate the subtleties, the depth, and uh, Santi and I both thank you for being part of uh, Blue Lava 2022. It's uh, grateful to have you join us. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas.